much more. I know how I made it. I know how I made it. I made it by God's amazing grace. Glory is preaching time. Try not to be disrespectful because there are some praying in the altar, and I believe that's a sacred time they spend with God. Uh, but preaching is just as important. Uh, we got to preach uh, uh, to hopefully the Holy Ghost convict somebody to get saved. Amen. And uh, today is a special day for me. You say, why is that? Because I get to preach. Praise the Lord. On a Sunday morning. If you knew that, you'd have skipped out. But if you were here Wednesday night, you'd have known I've been preaching today. So, amen, tough, amen. Just so you know, for those who weren't here for Sunday school class, we actually preached during Sunday school class, so this is Sunday school class. So, yeah. we're, we're vice versa day. No, I'm just joking. It's, it's, it is good to be in God's house. Be in prayer for your pastor, Brother Kurt. Just, look, just because he's not here this morning and just because he is in another country, uh, I mean another state, up north, another country, uh, does not mean that he's not your pastor. Amen. Yeah. Be in prayer for your pastor. He needs you. Yeah. This morning, uh, we're going to spend some time in the book of Acts, chapter 4. Acts, chapter 4. Uh, very good book to read, book of Acts. It's not where we get our doctrine from, because in the middle of this thing, uh, it transitions from, uh, from the Jews to the Gentiles. And, um, and I'm very thankful for that. But here we're going to see in Acts chapter 4 that Peter and John are arrested. They're arrested for some things, for preaching the gospel. And I just want to ask you and charge you right off the bat this morning, what's the purpose of you being here? Are you here just because you're just here to get a little attention? Are you here just to, just to uh, say that I've been to church for 45 minutes and that's good enough for a week? What's your purpose of being here? What's your purpose for, for, for spending time with God this morning? Well, I don't spend time with God. I just come and hear what you've got to ramble on about and then I go on about my business. Oh, you ain't got to tell us. We'll know. How will you know? Well, give about four or five hours. You won't be here tonight. Amen. That's how we know. Now, I know people's got things they got to do. But the Bible says, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Sister Nancy, Sister Nancy and I, she adopted me. I'm, I'm now her, her brother, brother, Shannon. Amen. She said she adopted me as stepbrother. So, uh, amen. So, uh, we were out there talking. And we were talking, every day you wake up is another day closer to the Lord's coming again. Amen. And the way this world is going... Uh, it's going far left, amen. It's going to the to the all that other political bunch of hoobla junk, uh, drag queen this, drag queen that. I'm not trying to beat nobody up. I'm just preaching what the Bible tells me to preach against, and it's out of hell wrong, amen. Out of hell wrong, uh, and so so much more as you see the day approaching. With that being said, I have a purpose of being here this morning. I have a purpose, and apparently God has a purpose for you to be here this morning, and that's for you to hear this message. This morning, I want to preach to you a message simply entitled, Preaching with a Purpose. You know, David, King David, sat there and said, uh, he says, is there not a cause that we should fight against the Philistines? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause why you should be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night? I don't know about you, but when I leave here Sunday night, Come Monday morning, I'm ready to go back to church. You say, well, you're just a Bible thumper, church goer, goody two-shoe. No, it's just because I'm a sinner, and I know when I get in the presence of God with my brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, I know that this is where I need to be, and it's better than being out there. Amen? It's better than being out there. And I want to tell you real quickly, today we got to preach with a purpose. I didn't just say me, I said we got to preach with a purpose. Very first, uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 1 says this, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Just so you know, that's being under attack today too. It's been under attack for, if it was under attack in the books of Acts, it's under attack today. 
People don't want you to go to church. People don't want you to worship God or preach in Jesus' name. But it's okay for them to shove all that other stuff down your throat through hidden messages on Cartoon Network. It's good enough for them to push all that stuff, legalizing this and legalizing that, and do it in a sneaky way to where it's like, hey, I want to fund the police, so let's vote for issue four. But issue four really is that they're making marijuana legal for 21 and up. You got to know what you're voting for, okay? Be careful what you're voting for. You vote however you want to. I'm not going to stand over your shoulder and, and give you that glare. I'll be like. I, I'm not going to do that. Just like we're not going to come to you, Brother Andy, when you miss church for four weeks and twist your arm and break it and push you back in church. We're not going to do that. Just so you know, I'm picking on Brother Andy because he's not missed church for four weeks. Amen? He's been here. Praise the Lord. I'm just picking on Brother Andy because me and Brother Andy are brothers. Amen? I pick on you, but you're bigger than I am. <laughs> he says right here, being grieved that they taught them. That's what's wrong with the world today. They're grieved that we're teaching people about Jesus. Let me ask you a serious question for those who are in church today but are being grieved that I'm preaching about Jesus. Let me ask you a question. What did it really hurt for you to listen to about a message of a man who died for you? Well, I just don't like them preaching about Jesus. Then you better not like Veterans Day. I'm just being honest. We're talking about men and women who died for you, for us. Just is what it is, okay? They're being grieved that they taught people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Let me just say this. Notice it didn't say preach through Jesus the, the crucifixion. It didn't say preach through Jesus the burial. It said and preach through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. That's a good part right there. The resurrection from the dead is where we get all our hope from. The resurrection from the dead is what separated Jesus Christ from Buddha, Allah, Muhammad, and all these other little G-gods. Why, Brother Shannon? Because you can go to their graves and their bones are still in the grave. But thanks be to God that Jesus Christ rose from the... I said thanks be to God. I, I said thanks be to God that Jesus came up out of the grave. You say, why, Brother Shannon? Because now we have hope. Praise the Lord. Now we have hope. I'm glad I don't serve a dead God. I'm glad, and I'm, being, I'm saying this with respect, but I'm glad I don't serve a maggot daddy. I serve a risen Savior. <laughs> the one that can give you life. Verse 3 says this, And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eve-tide. Notice this, verse 4, Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed. It didn't say work. Praise the Lord. It didn't say baptism. How be it many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men were about 5,000. What a revival. If we actually had church members that believed the word of God and actually got into church, back into church where they're supposed to be, we would not have enough seats to fill this building. And no matter what you did, we'd be sitting on the steps, sitting in the choir. Some of us, will throw all of our kids in the baptistry and just let them have fun. Amen. We would be sitting on the cheat seats right here. Some of y'all would be sitting on the... We, we couldn't fill the place. We, I mean, we, it, we'd have to go outside. Why, Brother Shannon? Because they preached the Word. Preaching the Word today still works. Verse 5, and it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and the scribes, we don't care about them. And then I asked the high priest and Caiaphas and John and then Alexander and as many as were the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. See, it's family members that give you problems. Yep. Amen. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name hath you done this? Brother Shannon, what gives you the strength and the power to do what you're doing this morning? I guarantee you it's not Folgers in your cups. And as much as I like them, it's not fudge rounds, chocolate paydays, or giant nerds. Somebody say amen. It's none of that. It's by the power of a risen Savior. 
that I could stand before you and preach. If anybody knew me when I was in, in, in class, uh, in, in English class or whatever you want to call it, uh, we had to give up and give speeches, and I couldn't do it very good. I was too scared. I was more worried about losing my hair. I had to lighten you up a little bit. Every time I say something about my hair, Brother Andy laughs. You're not far behind me, brother. Speaking from experience, brother. We could stand in a straight line. You could stand on my shoulders, and every once in a while we could just get some colored paper, and we could be a stoplight. <laughs> the glare off of our head. Where's Justin at? Talking about glare. Where's he at? <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone today, brother. <clears throat> Preaching. We got a purpose. We got a, pl- we got a purpose to being here today. Number one, the very first thing I want you to know of preacher with a purpose is the preparation of the preacher. Look at verse 8. I know I didn't read verse 8, but I want you to read verse 8 right now. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people, the elders of Israel. Notice this, that Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about a man who's laying on the ground flopping around like a dead chicken with his head cut off. I'm talking about a man who stands up before you preaching with power. Hey, preaching with some boldness. Preaching with some mercy and grace. It's kind of hard to yell at a person and still love them. Think about that. Every time my mama yelled at me, it was by real, you know you was fixing to get a belt following or a backhand. Somebody say amen. When she yelled to the top of her lung, it wasn't for supper. It's because I did something wrong. But how difficult is it to preach to four or five hundred people here today and this person over here gets it and this person over here gets it and then that person up there get it and all three of them could be saved at the same time. You say, how is it? It's because of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. The Holy Ghost is what Peter is being filled with. Hey, and I'm telling you, hey, you got a pastor who's filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, you got Sunday school teachers filled with the Holy Ghost. You got Wednesday night teachers filled with the Holy Ghost. You got brothers and sisters filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, what is that? That's preparation. Preparation. Thank God for it. In Exodus chapter 31, verse 3, it says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship. Hey, I want to tell you right now, thank God we are filled with the Spirit of God. Hey, so we can, spirit, so we can have spiritual discernment, so we can rightly divide the Word of God. Hey, thank God that he fills you with something that's real and alive. I don't care what anybody says this morning. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost... It's not like overeating and regretting what you did. It's a whole different high. It's a whole different feeling. It's a whole different life. Hey, it's different when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I I like saying getting filled with the Holy Ghost because when you say Holy Ghost, people duck their head because they don't want it. If it means that I have to run up there and look like you, Brother Shannon, you can keep the Holy Ghost. I will. Because I like it. I like feeling alive. I don't want to act like you. How are you doing? All right, I guess. You guess? You mean you don't know how you actually feel? Good luck with the doctor, because he ain't going to be able to figure it out. If you don't know, he don't know. Amen? What's your symptoms? I don't know. Yep, you got pneumonia. (laughs) Amen. I like being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. See, too many times people are wanting to be filled with the spirits of the devil at the liquor stores. Don't act like it. Don't act like you don't. I'm not pointing no names. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to do this or do that. But I pull. I drove by. I didn't pull up, but I drove by, and I could see people coming out of the, the beer store that go to church here. I just drove by, going to Jonesboro to pick up stuff for church. I guess they were getting stuff for church too, amen. I got to go to Sunday, I got to go to church and Brother Shannon's preaching, I need a... Amen. Everybody okay? I'm talking about being filled with something more than Thanksgiving turkey to where you regret and fall asleep. Hey, when God fills a man up, God fills him up to the top, very top, better yet, he makes it spill out to get on somebody else. And when you're excited to be at church like I am, it's going to shine a little bit. It's going to stick out. Hey, thank God I'm in church on Sunday instead of the grave on Monday. Thank God I'm in church today instead of in bed with the hangover. Thank God I am alive. I'm thankful. 
God. I'm, se- I'm talking about the preparation of a preacher is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Acts chapter 13, verse 52 says, And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. You are wanting to take joy out of that verse because you regret coming to church today. We regret going to church down there at Maple Springs. They're just too uppity. They shout too much. Let me tell you why we do it. Because we got joy. You're too, you, you lift your hands up too much. You shout too much. You say amen too much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all say all that. Y'all are too alive for us this morning. You want to know why? It's not because of you. It's because we got joy. I want to tell you today, Brother Shannon is happy and he's got joy and he's filled with the Holy Ghost today. That's preaching with a purpose. The preparation of the preacher. Is to, is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Not only that, but you look at this. The messenger of the preacher. The reason why I'm preaching this is because when we had our tent revival, Brother Kurt asked Brother Jody and Brother Sean and them, what is your purpose of doing this? What is your purpose of building a new building? What is the purpose of putting fancy pews in here and beautiful carpet that it took Brother Jody six weeks to put in? I don't know how long. I'm just messing Brother Jody. It was difficult, though, wasn't it? And I wasn't helping, and I got lost. What's your purpose of being here today? What is it? I'll tell you what it is. It better be Jesus Christ. Plus nothing, minus nothing. It better not be because of the boy you're sitting next to or the girl you're sitting next to. It better not be because you're flirting with the one upstairs that's got a wife. Amen. It better not be because of that. It better be because of Jesus Christ. The messenger of the preacher. Look at verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. Let me go ahead and say this. The messenger of the preacher, the message is not just to the elect. The message is not just to the, the, the ones that's got over $100,000 in their bank account. The one is not just to the ones that have hair. Somebody say amen. The Bible says right to it, be it known unto you all. Peter was making it known to everybody present here. Can I say this today? It don't matter what your color skin is, your ethnic background, it doesn't matter what your culture is. I'm here to tell you the message of Jesus Christ is to all men. When you look down your nose at somebody and God's telling you to go tell them about Jesus and you say, no, I don't like the way you dress. You're picking and choosing who you want to go to heaven. And I want to say this, shame on you for doing that. The message is for everybody. What are they doing at church? What are you doing at church? Well, I don't like Bob. He's in your church with sleeveless shirts on. Can I say this? Bob's been at church and had two hip repla- uh, hip repla- or knee replacements. What? He's had everything replaced. Amen. The, he got saved. He got a new heart. Praise the Lord. Hey, Bob is here, and I don't care if he has sleeves or not. Thank God he's in church. You say, why is that? Because that's the life-changing experience of the Holy Ghost and of God right there. Hey, Brother Tim, you could be anywhere you want to be, but thanks be to God, you're sitting up here doing security for us. Amen. Hey, Brother Jody, hey, you could still be at the trailer in that bedroom, but thank God you're at the front pew. Hey, we're church. Sister Lisa, Brother Will, hey, I'm telling you, amen. You could be still driving a four-wheeler in a dirt road getting drunk, but look, he's at church now. The message of the preacher is to everybody. I don't care if you heard it before. I don't care if you already saved. This message can still help you if you're allowed. It could be this. I could be preaching a message that you're preaching back to the preacher. So what's that? Could you imagine if Brother Kurt sat here for 45 minutes and not said a word? And just looked at you like you look at us. Or better yet, what if he didn't show up at all? Where's Brother Kurt? What are we going to do? We're lost. We're lost. Like a, like a leaf fell in front of an ant. And they're like, where do we go, George? Where do we go? I'm telling you, this message is for everybody. 
I don't care who. If you, if you don't even tell your mom or your dad about Jesus, shame on us. Amen? Shame on us. The message is to all, but notice this. Luke 12, 11 says, And when they, bring unto you in the, uh, when they bring you into the synagogue and into magistrates of powers, take you no thought how or what thing you shall answer or what you shall say. Brother Shannon, I just get so nervous. I don't know what to say. I get nervous every time I go to get behind this pulpit and preach. But let me tell you what. Look at what verse 12 says in Luke 12, 12. It says, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. I got to quit worrying about some things and just get up here and open the mouth and let God speak through me. This message is for everybody, and if it's for everybody, then you can do the very same thing I'm doing right here. I'm not saying stand up there and preach in a church, but I'm saying you can tell somebody about Jesus. Just let the Holy Ghost guide you. Just let Him go. Somebody got mad and took off already. Amen. Is that a truck? Praise the Lord. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you the same hour what you ought to say. Notice this also in verse 10. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ, notice this, the message we ought to be preaching, the message of the preacher, is not myself, me, 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 and I. Amen. Look what I did. Look, what, look, 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 it's about him, 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 yes. Jesus Christ. Amen. But by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, the message of the preacher is this. Notice this. The death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel. And notice this. That if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're saved and you heard the preaching of the gospel and you believe and you're saved. Notice what the end of verse 10 says here. Whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Amen. The message of the preacher is Jesus Christ. And if you believe that message, look up here. Don't bow your head. It ain't time to pray yet. Look up here. Hey, I'm telling you right now, if you get this message and you get saved today, you can stand exactly right where I'm at in front of this whole congregation whole. There is no void in your life. Something that we have to fill up inside. We have to get more booze. We have to get more drugs. We have to get more turkey legs. We have to get more bacon, sausage. We have to get something to fill us up because we stress eat. We do this. We worry. Hey, but I'm here to tell you that if you get Jesus Christ, everybody okay? If you get Jesus Christ, I said, if you get Jesus Christ, you can stand up here today whole. We got a lot of donut Christians today. Claim to be whole, but in the middle, something's missing. How do you know, Brother Shannon? Like I said before, let's just wait till 5 o'clock. We can tell. Well, all y'all want to preach is this. All you want to preach is that. Because we're supposed to preach it. You want to know why we keep preaching it? Because it still happens. Everybody okay? I'm not here to be best friends. I'm here to preach the Word. I'm here to be the assistant to Brother Kurt. And I'm here to tell you the reason why we still preach it is because it still happens. And I know I'm going to get ridiculed and beat up about it. But I'm here to tell you, you're not there looking at Brother Kurt's eyes when he gets disappointed because we have 200 people. You're not there when Brother Kurt gets disappointed and gets upset and gets, gets frustrated because our numbers are dwindling down. You don't see how tireless he works and how tireless he puts forth effort just for people to skip. You're not there. But me and Sister Sandy has been. She has been more than I have been. And Brother Kurt didn't ask me to preach this. I'm preaching it because I got a purpose. Yeah. Got to preach with a purpose. Amen. We throw it up here, brother. Praise the Lord. I didn't need one, but if you're going to offer it, praise the Lord. Somebody say, "Thank God, it'll shut him up for five minutes." <laughs> I'm not trying to beat nobody up. I'm not. I'm not trying to get. It. The last time I preached, I got a dirty note on my desk. I did. That's okay. They have an opinion just like everybody else. And I understand it. I'm not here to make you leave this place hurting Maple Springs, hating Maple Springs, hating Brother Kurt, hating me. We're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is stop you from having a heartache in the future. Just trying to. 
But if it means getting a little rough around the edges, we got to. If it means telling you the truth, it means telling you the truth. We do this. But the message of the preacher is to preach the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice this. And that if you can get all that, you can stand here whole. Amen. I've never... <clears throat> okay. Let me help you out with the process. Let me put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everybody can reach it real quick. You're sick. Really bad sick. You go to a doctor. Doctor says, I got exactly what you need. Take this antibiotic medicine. It'll make you feel better. But you never go to the pharmacy and fill the prescription. Are you going to get help? I got a prescription book right up there called the King James Bible. We got a man up here tirelessly working hard, hard to preach the gospel message to everybody. But if you never come to fill your prescription, you're never going to be completely whole. You're never going to be completely whole. Now I'm going to get to the good part. You ready for this? <laughs> Yeah, praise the Lord, Brother Shannon. Keep on preaching. I talked about the preparation of the preacher, the message of the preacher. Let's talk about the action of the preacher. Look at verse 13. It says this. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Notice the action of the preacher. Notice that they saw something in the preacher that they didn't see in the other congregation and the rest. You say, what's that? That he had boldness. Yeah, I know I'm going to get ridiculed today, but I'm still going to stand up here and tell you, stop for sake of the assembly of ourselves together. Stop skipping church. Come to church. I know I'm going to get beat up, but I'm going to stand here with boldness and tell you that if you never come to the pharmacy and fill your prescription, you're never going to be made whole. I got boldness. I know people are going to leave here and never come back, and I don't want that to happen, but I still got to stand here and tell you the truth while I got you, because I'm going to be held accountable. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you will die and go to hell, according to Scripture. I'm here to tell you the truth with boldness. Here's, here, and, 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 what's, and I'm going to say this with, with all due respect. A lot of my family members are here. And even some of them may get mad at me. But family, look over here. I don't care. I'm still going to do it with boldness because I'm held accountable for y'all too. Amen. My family, I love them, but I love y'all too. Remember, this message is for all, yep. not just for the ones I pick and choose. Amen. Amen. The action of the preachers to be standing here boldness. They saw that Peter was preaching with boldness. And they perceived that he was ignorant and unlearned, right? Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant. You can say whatever you want to about me. But it don't matter what you think. All that matters is what God says. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to, to, to do anything for you. I'm here for him. I don't want to be a Jonah going to Nineveh. I mean, I, or to, to Tarsus, getting on a ship to Tarsus. I don't want to flee from the presence of God. I want to be in the presence of God. I want to be smack dab in the middle of the will of God. But the only way you're going to figure it out is through the prescription book. Amen? By the Bible. They perceived, I don't care what you think. I got to do it. We don't want to do it. But if it gets somebody right with the Lord, we're going to do it. Nobody wants to dig a ditch. But give me the shovel, I'll do it. But me, I'll get dirty just as long as it means one soul gets saved today. Amen. Uh, look at this in the verse 13. Unlearned and ignorant, and they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Thank God we have a preacher that's been with Jesus. You know, I thought you'd get a little more excited about that. Thank God we have a pastor named Brother Kurt who's been with Jesus. Thank God we got some preacher men here. Brother Andy, Brother Jody, bro Brother Billy, hey man, preacher, bro Brother Ryan, hey, thank Brother Nick, praise the Lord. Hey, thank God we got some preacher boys here that's been with Jesus. Can I say this? On this side of the pulpit, I thank God that we have some members that's been with Jesus. Because you're already amped, ready, and prepared to come to church today. Not to pick a fight, Brother Ralph. By the way, settle down before Miss Brenda beat you up. Miss <laughs> Brenda, the offer's still on the table. 
Okay? He said, what offer is that? All she's got to do is give me a jawbreaker and an envelope, and I'll take Brother Ralph out. <laughs> so that's cheap. Hey, I'm whatever. I love jawbreakers and an envelope will help mail. Amen. A letter when I go to prison. <laughs> Where was I at? Thank God we have people that spend some time with Jesus. See, one of the things about going to church is it's not to see what Brother Kurt's preaching on so I could spread it all over Facebook. <clears throat> it's not about what Brother Kurt's preached about so that we can go down here at what Brother Kurt calls the local view, view and talk about it, gossip. It's not about that. Let me tell you what it's about. You ready for this? That when you leave these doors here in just a few minutes, not by your apparel, but by how you're acting, this world can tell that you have been to church and that you have been with Jesus. The message, the message of the preacher, <laughs> the action of a preacher. I thank God that I've been with, uh, that, I, that I have a pastor who's been with Jesus. Okay? Been with Jesus. Notice this. Not only with the preparation of the preacher, the message of the preacher, the name, uh, praise the Lord, the action of the preacher, but the reason why we preach. Look at verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Because it's right in God's eyes. Amen. Acts chapter 5 verse 29 says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Yeah. You still today ought to obey God rather than man. Amen. Galatians 1.10 says, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I suit to please men? For if I yet please men, then I should not be the servant of Christ. You want to know why we take ridicule and, and letters and, and gossip and beating up and Facebook posts and I hate Brother Shannon and I hate Brother Kurt? You know why we take that? Because we're rather to please God than man. Amen. Hey, because if we don't please God, we're not called the servant. Amen. We're not called a servant. Hey, I want to say this. Hebrews 11, 6 says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hey, I want to tell you the reason why we do the things we do. Brother Kurt and myself, we both believe that today, hey, there could be a massive revival here at Maple Springs. This whole church can be filled up. Hey, it can happen. It can happen. You're not going to convince me otherwise. It can happen. The difference is, is our faith is greater than your faith. Amen. You don't, you doubt, but we have faith. Amen. It can happen. The reason why we preach. 1 Corinthians 1, 21 says, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world in wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. God even calls it foolish, but it pleases Him. So, Brother Tony Mesa, I'm going to take the beating. If I have to, because I want to please him Amen. instead of them. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. I've got to. My favorite part. I've got nine minutes. Y'all ready? The rest, those, those that said amen, y'all can leave. The rest of y'all stay. Okay? I'm joking with you, okay? I'm joking. I'm joking. Y'all bear with me. I'll be done before that. The preparation of the preacher, the message of the preacher, the action of the preacher, the reason why we preach, now, here's the result of preaching. Amen. Look at verse 24. And when they heard that, uh, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice. You see right here, Peter and John was arrested. And they stood up before this people, and they, and they were like, hey, we've got to do this because it's pleasing to God. We don't care what you do. We don't care all that stuff. Uh, read it if you don't believe me, okay? It says blah, 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 blah. Amen. It's right there in, in, in the Bible, okay? But here's what it says. <clears throat> Verse 23 says, And being let go, they were let go. They went to their own company. That would be like me being thrown in prison. Then as soon as I'm out of prison, I come straight back to church and tell you everything that happened. That's what's happening right here. Okay? That's what's happening right here. It says, And being let go, they went to, to their company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Because they let them go and said, You're not allowed to preach the name of Jesus anymore. Okay? Go. All right? So verse 24, And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that, the, and all that in them is. The result of preaching like this is that the church can become under one accord. You don't have to wonder where Brother Shannon stands at if he's going to stand with Brother Kurt or not. You ain't got to wonder that. I'm with him. 
I'll tell you, number one, I've already told you before, but number two, you can just see the results. Don't come to me trying to get behind Brother Kurt and Sister Sandy's back trying to, trying to manipulate and stick some stuff because everything that's told to me will go to them. I'm just going to tell you straight out. Why, Brother Shannon? I thought it was confidentiality. They're the pastor, not me. I'm the assistant. I still got to tell them. I'm going to tell them. Whether you like it or not. So if you don't want any counseling, don't come to me. Hey, Amen. Because I'm going to tell them. They need to know. Okay? But here's the deal. We've got to be under one accord. Brother Tim, Brother Billy, Brother Andy, Brother Ray. Let's just pick a few people. Hey, I, you're right in there with us, Brother Brandon. Will, just say a select few of y'all guys were standing behind me. And you agree with what I'm saying. And the rest weren't. Are we under one accord? No. Are we? No. No. So then at 5 o'clock tonight, when those men that are behind me come back and you don't, what then? You're telling the world that this church is necessarily not under one accord. Come on, brother. I believe my faith is good enough to get me to heaven, but it's not good enough to get me back on Sunday night. My faith is good enough to go get me all the way to the third heaven. But it's nowhere near good enough to get me back on Wednesday night. My faith is good enough to get me all the way up there to the presence of God. But it's not good enough to get me to open my Bible on Monday. Or it's not good enough to get me on my knees before I go to bed at night. Every night. My faith is good enough for that. But it's not good enough for the rest. We're not under the same accord. Preaching like Brother Kurt preaches to try to edify and build people up will bring people together under one accord. Not only do they come together in one accord, but the number one thing that Brother Kurt and I decided that we have lacked here lately is praying together. Notice this, that verse 24, and when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, it doesn't do a church... We have a big old boat... Not really. I'm just using this as an example. Say if God tells us to build an ark today, and everybody in Maple Springs gets on it, and we all build an ark, and we get on it because we believe God, but only half of the crew rows, and the other half doesn't. We're not going to get very far. We're going to get tired and wore out. We're going to get frustrated and bicker and moan and gripe and complain. Better yet, if we just split the church in half and this side rolls on the right side and this side rolls on the left side and this side on the left side is the only one rolling, we're just going to be going in circles. Yeah. Amen. Amen, preacher! We're just going to be doing this just like everybody else in this world today. Oh, we need to go do this and oh, we need to go do this and oh, we need to go do this. Next week, we're like, oh, I forgot this. We go backwards. We're just going to be spinning in circles when in reality, we should be running the race that is set before us, not spinning in circles. Which way did he go, George? Which way did he go? We got to be going forward. Amen. Row together. Together they prayed together. Notice this: the results of preaching. I'm done. Right? Look at verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Maple Springs, we need a shaking. God needs to get our attention one way or another. We can only do so much preaching the word and calling and phone calls and this and that. We can only do so much chasing over here and going over there and doing this and doing that. We can only do so much. We can only roll this boat a certain direction. We need some faithful members on the other side helping us. We need a shaking. Let me ask you a question. What's your purpose here? What's your purpose here? As we stand, Sister Lisa, come forward. Invitation's open. What's your purpose?